Hello, Spokane nonprofit community. Mark Pond here with the Spokane Public Library. And I wanted to take some time today and run you through some of the functionality of our grants research database, the Foundation Directory Online. So there are a number of places where you can go to find that, but probably the easiest route is just go to spokanebusiness.org, scroll down the page here. Resources are listed out alphabetically. And we have two versions right now of Foundation Directory Online. I'm going to focus here on the just the Foundation Directory Online as opposed to the Essential version. The essential is really kind of a pared down and really kind of the, the bare bones model. So for full functionality, let's use the Foundation Directory Online. So just come down the page here, look for instructions about how to get access to the Foundation Directory. And then once we're in, I'll just run you through a couple sample searches here and show you what this looks like. So on the opening page, they have Google single search box here that works okay. But generally, I'd recommend going to this advanced search and filters option right up here. And once we're here, really the main two fields that you need to fill in are the subject area. So what is it that you're seeking funding for? And then where will the funding be used? Um, subject area, here you just have to turn yourself into human thesaurus, trying to figure out how many different ways you can describe what it is that your program is doing. So let's say if you're interested in food banks and nutrition assistance and food security, you can just click that box and that grabs a number of kind of subcategories within that field. But um, just know that you can also throw in keywords to add to that, to say nutrition. That should show up there as well. So you can add as many of those subject area headings as you want. There is pro probably some upper practical limit where you just don't want to get tens of thousands of results. Um, but do kind of think expansively about your program. So if it's a food security and nutrition issue, and then it's probably poverty as well. And maybe you're helping to address lack of housing on the side. So really just kind of come at that pretty broadly. Then here under the geographic focus, you can get down to the city level to say, all right, we're here in Spokane, either the city or the county. But I've found that it's best to start a little bit broader and just start with the state level, and then we can kind of work our way down from there. All right, so those are the main two fields. You can narrow things down a little bit more should you want to in terms of the population, who, if you're targeting particular groups for this grant, you can narrow it down there. Again, I would recommend starting broad and seeing what you can find. And if you're finding way more than you can really sift through, then come back here and start adding some extra filters. This organization name, if you know who the funder is that you're trying to target, go ahead and pop that in. And then this location piece, that one, 99% of the time, I leave that blank because we don't generally care if the money's coming from some foundation in Florida or someone here locally. And then this who's who, this allows you to kind of tap into LinkedIn to see who might be on particular boards and maybe find some connections that way. But generally speaking, it's these two first fields here, the subject area and the ge geographic focus. So let's go ahead and run our search for that. What we get here is a set of results, and it's broken down into these different buckets. So we've got 424 funders who have funded food security issues here in Washington State, and they've given out a total of 3,700 plus grants to 275 recipients. And then you can hop over here and read through all the IRS 990 forms should you really want to take the deep dive. One filter that I forgot to turn off here. Generally speaking, most kind of smaller nonprofits aren't looking for U.S. federal funding as that tends to come with a whole lot of reporting requirements that kind of can be pretty burdensome. So let's take that filter off and run our search again. So now we're down to 404 grant makers. And then from here, you can scroll on down the page again to kind of see those various buckets broken down of the recipients versus grants versus grant makers. But let's come in here to the grant makers and we'll just choose the Seattle Foundation as an example. So here's the profile for the Seattle Foundation. And right at the very top of the page, Foundation Directory does a really good job of giving you kind of the 90,000 foot overview where you can do some quick triage to figure out if this is a good match for you or not. You know, there are only so many hours in the day to fill out grant applications and you want to be looking for those organizations that match up really well with yours. So here by subject area we can see where their money is going. So uh, food security I'm sure lands in that human services area so that's a good match. Uh, geographically it looks like Seattle Foundation scatters a fair amount of money around the nation. So we can drill in here on the map. Just click on the region that you're interested in 
and be able to see that, okay, here in Spokane County, they've given 212 grants to 49 different recipients for a grand total of $3.5 million over the last five years. Um, you can get down to the level of seeing who they've actually funded. And sometimes this can be a great place to look for potential collaborators and folks who already have, in this case, a relationship with the Seattle Foundation. If you're putting together some program, you might be able to go knock on the doors at Second Harvest and say, hey, Second Harvest, we see that you already have this relationship with the Seattle Foundation. You're working in food and hunger issues. That's what we're doing as well. Let's see if we can team up on a grant to go talk to the Seattle Foundation. All right, so that's the, the overview there, but just know that you can drill in to each one of these primary areas here to get more fine-grained details. And again, um, how big are the grants that they give if you're absolutely needing twenty-five to 50000 for your program to get up and running, then, you know, looking at this, just know that it's probably not going to come entirely through the Seattle Foundation. Their wheelhouse, they're giving much smaller grants in that less than $5,000 range. As you come down the page here, then you can see who they're giving to, who they've funded in the past, geographic areas where they give, the subject areas that they tend to focus on, and sometimes this is a good place to scan through to see, oh, dang, we didn't think to search for child wel welfare. Absolutely, let's throw that back in the search and, and run that subject heading through to see if we can find other matches as well. All right, further down the page here, some similar organizations other funders to maybe consider. This application and RFP section here is really handy to have this rounded up in, in one section. For the Seattle Foundation, they're just basically saying, go to our website and get more information there. But if you're submitting an application here, are the things that you're going to be asked for. So um, that's really nice. And sometimes it's just a, a single line saying, contact us, we'll chat. Other times it's literally a 12-step program there. All right, sometimes this giving limitations I find interesting. So they say that their giving is limited to King County, Washington, but we know from look just looking at the map that we were just looking at that they scatter money all across the nation. So I'm not exactly sure how that lands there, but I think that it might just kind of be a weed out factor where if you're doing cursory research and not really diving in, you might see that and just pass and skip over to the next foundation. That's kind of the quick snapshot there. Here's the listing of who's who's on their board and who, who their staff members are and so on. But in terms of taking this data and being able to download it and take it back with you, so you can just download a PDF, which will grab this entire profile, or you can just email it directly to yourself. In terms of kind of grabbing these larger lists, you can download 10 records at a time. So if we just go through, I'll just grab the first five here give you a sense of what this looks like. And then you can come up here and download those profiles into a PDF. You can also put them into spreadsheet format, and that's really kind of a pared down basic information type of snapshot for these foundations. So what we're looking at here, here are those first five that we just downloaded, but um, it's basically just contact information, name of the organization, their email, how much money they've given, how much money they have sitting in the bank. But you can use this kind of as your own basic version of a kind of spreadsheet of where your work is. You can insert your own column saying, hey, I talked to the Norcliffe Foundation on November 1st, and they said they're interested, but call back next month. And yeah, so you can kind of keep track of where you are in this process. All right, so that is really the, the bulk of it. If we come back here to to the search results. Just know that that same structure, um, you can download the grants, you can download the, the recipients, being able to drill into the, each one of those to see specifically kind of what the funds were, were allocated for. So that's the flyby there of the foundation directory. It's a super powerful tool. It allows you to really cover a lot of ground really quickly when it comes to doing grant research. And really, it is the gold standard out there for, for this particular type of question. So I hope that gets you pointed in the right direction. If so, great. If not, please be in touch and I'd be happy to lend a hand.